taking up money. The first thing I asked Reese, I said, what are they taking it up for? Yeah. Amen. Yeah, amen. I don't just drop my money in anybody's bucket. Come on. Amen. Yeah. One day I'm going to have to give an account for where I planted my seed. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah. So I don't just give to anybody that's got their hand out yeah. as far as charities because they may be using it for something I don't Come support on. or that you know, the Bible doesn't agree with. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 18th verse. You should have had this marked since last Sunday morning. Because I told you, we were coming back to this. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Those of you that were here know that we had camera problems and first one thing and then another. and That's all right. Amen. When you title a sermon, Fellowship with the Devils, you shouldn't expect to get a pat on the back from the enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 18th verse. It says, Behold Israel after the flesh. Mm -hmm. That statement right there alone is enough to know us that it ain't going to end up in something good. No because, way. Brother Bruce, your flesh, there is no good thing in it other than Jesus Christ and what He does. Amen. Your new man. Mm -hmm. Your old carnal flesh, there is nothing good in you. Paul said he was the chief of sinners. Amen. Yeah. And if he was yeah. the chief of sinners, I hate to think where that puts me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, After the flesh... Are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? He's talking about them partaking of the things of the false gods of that day. And this, this here fits today just like a glove, just like it did back then. Yeah. And you'll read here that apparently they thought that you could eat from the table of the Lord and eat from the table of devils and it's okay. They thought you could drink from the cup of devils and the cup of the Lord without suffering any consequences, but Paul's getting ready to tell them otherwise. Amen? Amen. He says, What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in the sacrifice to, to the uh, idols is, is anything? And he's talking about, Am I saying that those idols are greater than God or that they have any deity whatsoever? No, but I say, and this is the, tw the 20th verse, that the things that which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils All right. and not to God. Yes. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Yeah. Now there's the text for our sermon title. Amen. Fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. That's right. Do we provoke the That's Lord right. to jealousy? And then he asked this question, yeah. are we stronger than he? What do we think we are doing? Amen. Come on. Father, I ask you this morning to bless this word, Lord. Open our hearts and our minds and our ears to receive what you'd have for us. Drive back every <laughs> devil and devil and principality. Lord, that we'd come against your word this morning in Jesus' mighty, precious name. Cover us in your blood, afresh and anew, and drive back every evil and every wickedness that could come against your word in Jesus' mighty, precious name. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a church up the road here. I'm not going to tell you their name. wouldn't be hard for you to find out, but I'm putting on a horror show for, I guess, tonight and tomorrow night be the last night. But every night this past week, they have put on something called Thriller. Yeah. And they're putting on this big theatrical thing where they're dressed up like demons and devils and... Uh, what are those uh, Night of the Living Dead people? The zombies, zombies yeah. yeah, zombies, and all of that. Yeah. And doing all of this in the name of trying to win souls, and their pastor is going to preach from a coffin. My Amen. Lord. And they do all of this, and you should, if you've seen the preview for it, it looked just like something that Hollywood would put out, Night of the Living Dead, or what mm. have you. But that being said, they do all of this to try and win a soul, to try and scare somebody. Bad enough that they can get them saved. Amen? Yeah. Well, the Bible says have no fellowship with devils. Right. The Bible says to shun the very appearance of evil. Right. The Bible says to not have any fellowship with the works of darkness. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. The Bible says how to get a soul saved. What God chose to do it. He didn't choose to dress up like Hollywood. He didn't choose the demons and the devils. He chose the foolishness of preaching whereby some might be saved. Amen? Whatever happened, I'd like to know. I'd like to ask the modern church of today, whatever happened to preaching the gospel? Amen? Whatever happened to opening up the book and preaching the word?
Word of God and hearts falling under the convicting power of the Holy Spirit so much so they have to hold on to their pew to keep from being drugged to the altar by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Whatever happened to old fashioned Holy Ghost filled preaching. Amen. Somebody that would stand behind the pulpit and I ain't talking about in flip flops and mowing shorts either. Amen. I'm talking about somebody that would stand behind the pulpit who had not, not just staggered out. Not just staggered out of seminary but just staggered out of the Holy of Holies. Amen. And spending time with God and had a word for the people from the Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Whatever happened to that? I know that's old fashioned. I know that's out of date but I also know that that is the answer. We need some old fashioned preachers uh, spirit filled uh, that will stand before people and say I'm giving you what I laid before God to get. Amen. Not that I found on somebody else's notes. Uh, not that I got from my professor but I'm giving you what God gave me on, to brother. give you. That's it. Amen. Amen. I could spend my week preachers. sifting through the notes of other preachers. And don't get me wrong. I borrow things from other preachers. Preachers borrow things from me. All That's right. the way it's done. Amen. But I could spend my week thinking, well, I don't have to study. I'll just preach what Oral Roberts preached in 1966. Amen. All right. But the Bible says study to show yourself approved. I may not get to preach on Sunday morning what I studied this week, but I can guarantee you this. There was some studying that went on. All Amen. Right. I didn't just say, well, God, will, I'll open my mouth and God will fill it. All right. Amen. I've heard people say that. I've heard one yeah. brother say, I'm not going to study. Mm -hmm. I'll open my mouth and the Lord will fill it. And I thought, I didn't tell him, I should have. I said, yeah, he might fill it with your foot. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Because the Bible says study to show yourself approved. Mm -hmm. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Study. Lay before God. Ask God what He would have you to give to the people. Because right. i got news for you. I can't give you something that will cause you to grow, something that will benefit you eternally unless God gives it to me first. Right. I could take this podium this morning and I could tell you a yeah. few jokes. I know some yeah. jokes. Amen. Yeah. I could rattle off some, some impressive, intelligent words that you wouldn't understand and neither would I. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I could try to talk real intelligent to you. And you might leave out of here with your conscience appeased that, well, you know, I went to church. Yeah. Feeling good about yourself that you did your righteous duty on Sunday morning and you went to church. Amen? Yeah. But it wouldn't help you in the long run. Right. You need something, Brother David, that whenever hell breaks loose, you can grab a hold of the Word of God and stand upon the rock. Amen? An everlasting Word of God that never changes. You need something that God gave to a man or to a woman to give to you, or you need something that God gives to you directly. You don't need something that's been filtered down through theological things and through cemetery. Cemetery. I, I, that was a slip of the tongue, but it fits. Amen? Through the cemetery. Amen? Through the professors who try and reason everything out. I know a boy that wasn't so many years ago, Brother Sleece, that he would lay hands on people and he would see miracles. Amen. But today he questions his faith. Why? Because of the professors of the college that he goes to. All right. Amen. Come on. Because of the professors of the college that he goes to, he wonders if God is even what he was raised up believed that, to, to believe that he was. Yeah. And all of this happens because we fellowship. People fall into fellowship with, and I told you last week that the word fellowship... Here, it means to be a sharer of. See, we begin to share the things of the devil. Mm -hmm. right. We begin to associate. True. Yeah. How many times have you ever heard somebody say, well, I'm just hanging around these people because I want to get them saved. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. And more times than not, instead of them getting them saved, they got them lost. That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to marry this person. They're, you know, they're they're an atheist, but or they they they're not non-believer. But you know, once we get married, I'll get them. them yeah, yeah, and they wind up getting you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. We need to be careful who we associate with. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I ain't just talking about in the world, uh, brother Bruce, but we do. Amen. Right. We need to be careful. Amen. Amen. Not to associate. Some people you associate with will bring you down. That's it, bro. You may be. You may have the victory. You may walk out of church on Sunday morning feeling like you could fight any devil that showed his head, but simply because you begin to associate with them old friends. That's right. You begin to rub elbows with devils. That's right. And I ain't calling your friends devils, but the spirit that's behind it is from the devil. Amen. Oh. You begin to fellowship with devils. And sooner or later, if you play with a hog, you smell like a hog. Amen. Yeah. Sooner or later, if you play with a skunk, you smell like a skunk. Amen. Yeah. Sister Hannah can go out all day and she can play outside and she loves to play outside. Oh, wow. But while she's out there, she rubs the cat. While she's out there, she rubs the dog. While she's out there, she rolls in the dirt. And the things that 
she associated with and fellowship with, she brings the smell in with her. Amen. And we say, time for a bath. Amen. Amen. That's the way we are. We come in on Sunday morning stinking in the nostrils of God because all week long we fellowship with the devil. Yeah. All week long he, we let him sleep on our couch. Amen. All week long we set up a room for him at the house. He lives with us. Amen. He don't just come for a visit no more. We've moved him in. Amen. And we have fellowship with devils for so long that the church has begun to take on the nature of the devil. Amen. More of the nature of the devil than there is the nature of God. Hey, boy, I can preach this morning. I feel the preacher coming on. Hallelujah. I said the church has got more of the nature of the devil than they do the nature of God. Why? Because they spend more time with the devil than they do with God. Amen. 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 And Paul said, I would not have you to have fellowship with devils. Tomorrow night, I guess they're doing it tomorrow night. Yeah. Parents, Christian and non-believer alike, right. will fellowship with devils. That's it, brother. They will allow their children to fellowship with devils. Come on, preach it. And they expect that there's all in fun and it's all games and there's no serious consequence. Yeah. Till you hear the testimony of somebody that said, you know, yeah. I know when this problem started. Uh -huh. I know when the blackness came in. Right. I was at a Halloween party. Mm -hmm. And they begin to have a seance, or they begin to play with the Ouija board, or they begin to do these different things. Yeah. They begin to divine things. Stuff begin to happen. And ever since then, there's been something going on in my mind. The spirit of fear. See, all oh, you listen to me. I hope those people out there that's putting on their horror nights and their haunted houses and their and their holy ween and, and all of the different the thriller that's up the road here. Yeah. You begin to dabble in those things. You begin to fellowship with those devils. You begin to fellowship and associate with them. You begin to take on the nature and the traits and the things of the devil. And it don't, you, you may not think it affects you, but it affects you in your mind. It affects you in your spirit. It affects your children for generations to come. There's an old saying that what one generation tolerates, the next generation will accept. And we have seen it in America. Amen. It, one generation tolerated the homosexuals and now this generation accepts the homosexual lifestyle. Amen. Yeah. One generation tolerated them taking away the King James Bible and replacing it with something else. And now this generation accepts a perversion as long as it's leather bound and got Holy Bible on the side of it. It don't matter if it was spawned in the womb of the devil. They still accept it. Come on, brother. I'm telling you. Come on. Why? Because of fellowshipping with devils. Beginning to associate and he, put, he, he throws in another example here. Yeah, no he talks about drinking the cup of the Lord yeah. and the cup of devils. Yeah. He talks about being partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. I told you last Sunday morning what little bit we were able to get out. That you are what you eat. That's a worldly saying, but it holds true in the spirit. When you feed upon the things of the world, you become more like the world. When you feed upon the things of Satan, you become more like Satan. When you partake of the devil's table, you become more like the devil than you do God. But on the other side of the scales, if you partake of the things of God, you become more godly. If you spend more time in prayer, you begin to look a little bit more like God than you do the world. If you begin to fast and you begin to pray, and listen, I know it's the blood of Jesus that saves us this morning, but there's still something to be said about old-fashioned study of the Word of God. There's still something to be said about spending some time at an old-fashioned altar of prayer and seeking the face of God with hot tears. There's still something to be said this morning about pushing the plate back and saying, I ain't gonna eat till my loved ones come in. I ain't going to eat till I, sit, till I get a hold of God. Come on, preach on, brother. There's still something to be said this morning, Brother Bruce, about having a Jacob burden. That's good preaching. That says, I ain't going to let God till you bless me. I ain't going to quit praying till I see some results. Oh, but you know what kind of thinking we got today? And this came from a fellowship with devils. We got preachers that say, listen, don't ask more than once. Yeah. Yeah. If you do, you're showing a lack of faith. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That means you don't really believe God. You're full of baloney. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. You're full of baloney. Come on. 
Jesus said, if it don't happen once, knock again. Right. Amen. Knock and it shall be open. And if you take that back to the original writing, it's knock and keep on knocking until it's open. What about the woman and the unjust judge? When they asked Jesus how they should pray, he's teaching them how to pray. He said that she kept on and she kept on until finally, because of her continual knocking, because of her continual persistence, the judge finally. Yeah, that's faith, right? The judge finally. Oh, yeah. I told you before, I'll tell you again. I ain't preaching on it this morning, but it'll fit. Come on. It takes more faith to ask the second time when nothing happened the first time. Amen? Right. There's not a lack of faith in you asking yeah. again. All you're doing is showing God that, hey, I know nothing happened. I didn't feel nothing. I didn't hear no thunder. I didn't see no lightning. But I'm still asking. I'm still knocking. It's me again, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I'm still knocking on the door till it opens. Come on, brother. But because we fellowship with devils, because we've associated with devils, we have spawned so many false doctrines in the church. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. The pastor of the largest, and I can't help but use him as an example, example because he makes himself such an easy target. Mm -hmm. Of the largest charismatic church in America, 40,000 members. They asked him about Mitt Romney because Mitt Romney is a Mormon. Yeah. He asked him, well, what do you think about Mitt Romney? He's a Mormon. Do you think that he's saved? Well, sure he is. Sure, I'm beginning to wonder if anybody's lost. Yeah, really? Come on. There you go. I'm beginning to wonder yeah. if these preachers think anybody's yeah. lost. Amen. Yeah. No wonder they don't preach on hell no more. They don't think there's no use in it because ain't nobody going there. That's right. Amen. Right. Ain't nobody going to hell. Don't worry about it. I'm beginning to wonder if anybody's in danger of hell, fire, and brimstone yeah. anymore because you can believe the way you want to believe and I can believe the way I want to believe. We'll all get there in the end. Come on, brother. That ain't what the Bible says, brother. Come on, brother Billy. That ain't what the Bible teaches. Say it. The Bible says Jesus. That's is right. the only way, right. the only truth, and the only life. And it says, if somebody comes to you preaching another gospel, right. let them be cursed. That's right. The Mormon doctrine teaches that Jesus and Satan are brothers. My Lord. The Mormon doctrine teaches that sooner or later everyone will find their place in the kingdom. Yeah. And that's just barely scratching the surface of this. Day. The Mormon doctrine believe. That the writings of Joseph Smith are on the same level as God's Word. Have you ever seen the commercial where it says there's another testament of Jesus Christ? Yeah. And they've got their the Book of Mormon, and it's you know kind of like a halo type look. It's got a light shining from it because they believe it's as much the Word of God as this is. Uh -huh. Oh my. my! That don't sound like Christianity to me, and you know? not at least not the Christianity the Bible teaches. Amen. Right, that don't sound like Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. Amen. <laughs> Ain't but one way to get to God. Come on, preach on. There ain't but one book. And like Brother David says, you can burn them. You can burn every copy, but still, the Bible says in the beginning was the Word. That's before ink. That's before paper, Brother Sleeves. God's Word is eternal. You can burn them, but His Word will forever remain. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word shall remain. But because we fellowship with devils. Amen. Amen. And listen, the longer you fellowship with this stuff, the least, da the, the less dangerous it seems. That's it, brother. And these people here believe that they could fellowship with the devil mm -hmm. and not suffer any consequences. Mm -hmm. But Paul would say this mm -hmm. in 1 Corinthians 6 and 16. You think I preach it hard. My goodness. <clears throat> Paul said, what? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot mm -hmm. is one body? Yes, sir. Do you not know if you play with fire, you're going to get burnt? Amen. You know, we tell children that all the time. That's right. Don't play around that wall socket, yeah. you'll get shocked. Mm -hmm. Come on. Don't yeah. play around the road, mm -hmm. you get run over. Yeah. yeah. Don't play with those matches, you'll get burnt. Mm -hmm. That's it, brother. And then here we go in our blind stupidity, playing with everything the devil's got to offer, thinking we ain't going to get hurt. Not yeah. the least. Preach. Amen. Fellowship Preach with it. devils. Mm -hmm. It'll cost you. Yes, sir. It'll cost you. Yes, sir. You'll begin to take on the nature <clears throat> of the devil. That's right, brother. Amen. Right. <clears throat> you'll begin to believe that there is other ways other yeah. than Jesus because that's what the devil wants you to believe. Amen. <clears throat> you'll begin to believe that there is other word of there's more word of God than just this. This old <laughs> this old dusty book. Mm -hmm. yeah. This old outdated. Yeah. Well, congratulations. That's what the devil believes. Yeah. That's what he wants you to believe. Amen. Amen. The, the devil is influencing your mind. Amen. Right. And you'll find yourself 
Dressing up like the devil to win the lost. Right. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Praise God. How far have we fallen, church? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How far have we fallen? The Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. He hasn't given us the spirit of fear. And if the spirit of fear is not cast upon you by the Lord, who brings it in his book satchel with it? Amen? It's one of the tools of the devil. And when you begin to use fear, now don't get me wrong, if I preach on hell and you get scared, you need to. Yeah. Amen? If I preach on hell today and I talk about this burning, terrible, horrible, eternal place and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to be scared, buddy. Because fire is, is licking at your britches. Amen. And you about to fall in. You better get a hold of Jesus. Come on. But when you begin to put on haunted houses, yeah. where's the line at? Yeah, where is it? Where's the line at? Huh. Where's the line? See, the more you fellowship with devils, the blurrier the line yeah. becomes. Right, right. Amen. The more you fellowship with demons and associate and eat off the table of devils, Brother Sleece, the more blurry the line becomes. Right. Everything's okay. Well, your yeah. faith's all right. I, my faith is all right. Your faith is all right. You can do this. Surely this ain't going to hurt you. Come on. Oh, but it will. And we see it today, church. Yeah. How blind can we be? We've got churches by the hundreds, by the thousands, filling full of unnumbered amounts of people that come in just as a routine and they get their emotions touched. But there's no real power and spirit of God. We accept those things that the devil has to offer, but we don't accept the things of the Lord. Oh. Maybe he's putting out a tastier oh. buffet he does for our flesh, amen, yeah. than our spiritual man. Hallelujah. Than what we want because our flesh doesn't want to eat all of the spiritual things of God. But that's whenever it comes down to the self-denial that we've got to say, God, I know that my spirit is more important than my flesh. God, I know that everything that I see, everything that I touch, everything that I hear, I need to measure with your word. And if it goes against it, it's not of you. Come on, brother. It's not of you. That's good preaching. That's good preaching, but it's old fashioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't even to hear it very many places this morning, amen. Come on. I don't take no pride in that, and I know there's a lot of them out there preached that I just don't know them. Yeah. Amen. Come on. The things of God are still take preeminence right. over the things of the world. Right. The spiritual things of God are still better for you than the things of the world. That's right. Amen. Amen. The power of positive thinking ain't gonna keep you out of hell. That's right, brother. Amen. That's the truth. You're okay, I'm okay, everybody's okay. Every day's a Friday. Ain't going to keep you out of hell. Amen. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Amen. Know you not that he that is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. What's he saying? He that fellowships with the Lord. Yeah. There's a transformation that begins to take place. Yeah. How many people know the longer you live with somebody, the more you start acting like them? Amen. I see people today, and when they talk to me, it's hard to figure out which one's speaking, them or their husband. Yeah. They say the same things. They say it with the same attitude. They say it with the same voice almost. All right. Amen. Come you on. can see how the two begin to join. Come on. That's what happens when you fellowship with the devil. <clears throat> yeah. You begin to take on... That's what the church has done. Amen. They took on the nature of the devil. That's right, brother. There's a lot of ways you can get there. Well, that's what the devil teaches. That's it. There's a lot of books you can claim to be the Word of God. Well, that's what the devil teaches. Yeah. Sin ain't going to harm you. Well, that's what the devil teaches. Amen. So you begin to take on the nature of the devil. That's right, brother. You begin to call everybody brother. It don't matter who it is. That's it don't matter right. what they believe. Yeah. You begin to say my Mormon brother. Uh -huh. Even though they believe that Jesus and the devil are brothers. That's right. Even though they believe things that go completely contrary to the book that you founded your life upon. Brother, yeah. my brother. Amen. Come on. You begin to call your Catholic friends your brothers and sisters. That's true. Even though they go down and they do their ma their Saturday Mass and they count their beads and they say Hail Mary, Mother of God and they confess their sins to a priest, yes. you still call them brother. Why? Because you've been fellowshipping with devils. That's the way the devil works. He wants all of us to lock arms. He don't want nobody standing for the real truth. That's right. He wants it. He wants truth so blurry yeah. that what Brother Sleeves believes, if he believes it, it's truth. If what Brother David believes, if he believes it, it's truth. No, there ain't but one truth. 
Amen. Right. You, know, you, you may be sincere in your belief, but you're sincerely wrong if you don't yeah. know that Jesus Christ yeah. is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. Amen. Yeah. You have fellowship with devils for so long, you have taken on the nature it, of Satan. And that's what kind of church we got today. That's it. Mm -hmm. And somehow or another, and it didn't happen overnight. Uh -huh. You remember we talked last week about bowling the frog? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> You don't throw him in a pan of hot water. You just put him in there in the cold water and you turn the heat up just a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. First he's swimming around thinking he's right at home and then he's thinking, ooh, it's just like a jacuzzi. Yeah. It's getting a little warmer. I like this. It feels good on my back. Yeah, arthritis. Arthritis on the frog. Yeah. <laughs> Till finally, it's bubbling and he can't get out. And he's in trouble. And he's in trouble. <laughs> and that's what's happened to the church. He's sinking. Yeah. That's what's happened to the church. He's going down for the last count. He's taking in more water than he can spit out. That's it. That's what's happened to the church. Come on, brother. It started a little, a yeah. little. Yeah. Oh, this witchcraft thing that we got, it don't happen just on October 31st. That's right. Yeah. We got this thing going on all year round inside the church, not just the world. That's right. Yeah. We've got big name preachers, Benny Hinn, right. visiting the grave of Catherine Coleman trying to get her anointing. Uh -huh. What is he, lost his mind? Mm -hmm. The Bible condemned communication with the dead a long yeah. time ago. Right. Yeah. Much less you going out to their grave and praying and filling their anointing and their spirit. Yeah. Guess what, Brother Benny? They ain't there no more. That's right. They either in hell or they in heaven. I ain't sure where they went. Come on. Amen. Come on. But they ain't there no more. We got Christians in their everyday life. Drop the dish rag. Oh no, tramps are coming. Amen. Walked under a ladder. Oh no. Broke a mirror. Oh no. Picture fell off the wall. Oh no. Yeah. Hands itching. That's what they say. Nose is itching. Ears is itching. Take a bath. That's what they say. Amen. Come Don't on. take a bath. Come on. I'm talking about things that are practiced that we consider little things. But they're definition in any way that you cut it. Amen. And wrong in God's book. I didn't write. We got Christians reading their horoscope. Right. People on Facebook every day, Christians born again, posting their horoscope. I'm thinking, you dummy. Don't you know that that's against God's word? Yeah. So we have this witchcraft thing. It goes on all the time. Yeah, that's right. Not just October the 31st. That's right. Amen. As a matter of fact, this power of the mind. Yeah. The, 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 as far as they have taken, I know that there is power in positive faults or. Maybe power is not the right word. Yeah. It's certainly you can you can meet people who think negative all the time and you can see how it affects them. Right. So there's certainly it affects you whether you think positive or whether you think negative. Right. But when you take it to the place to where you believe that your power of thought is so powerful that you can create and you can mold, mm. you don't cross the line. That's it, brother. When you take the word of God and say that Abraham called those things that were not as though they were. Yeah. That ain't what the Bible says. Come on. The Bible says God called those things that were not as though they were. Yeah. You don't have that kind of creative power. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> I leave you here today sitting on the pew and you think about a loaf of bread hard as you can and see when it appears. Yeah. Amen. Jesus there with Satan in the wilderness, he had the power to turn that rock into bread. Jesus That's did, right. but you don't. Mm -hmm. You don't. This I'm a God, you're a God. We're all gods. Mm. Or witchcraft. Amen. Right, man. I gotta move on. I'm almost done. I'm on page one. <clears throat> what did he say up there? He said, Are we stronger than he? In other words, Brother David, when did we become more intelligent than God? Uh -huh. Amen. Never. When did sin become all right? I want to ask you this morning, when did we decide that the things that God condemned, well, they ain't so bad no more? I can tell you when. When the church began to fellowship with devils. That's it. When was sin no longer sin when the church began to fellowship with devils? That's right. When was it all right to practice the occult and witchcraft when the, when the church began to fellowship with devils? Amen. On back to the bowl and frog. This stuff didn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. It happened a little bit at a time. Yeah. Right. As we were children, Walt Disney brought it into our lives. Yes. Amen. That's Still bringing it into our lives That's today. Right. Amen. Yeah. Don't tell how many Christians go in and out of the theater doors to watch things like... Uh, Harry Potter and all of that kind yeah. of stuff. Now, it's, and the devil has them so blinded that they don't think there's anything wrong with it. Right. And, and when it's stuff that God said explicitly, Brother Slee said, stay away Wait. from that. Amen? By, the Bible, it's, it cuts no corners. It is not murky. It is not a fuzzy detail at all. When it comes to the things of darkness and it comes to the things of the occult, God says, stay away from it. That's right. But when do we start to think different? When we begin to fellowship. With devils. That's right, brother. When we begin to fellowship you got it. with devils. And Paul said, 
Have no fellowship with devils. Amen. Come on. Why? Because things will start happening to you. Right. Amen. I'm closing this morning. Yes. And I'm having to skip a whole bunch of these. We may have to come back and get into this again. Three ain't going to hurt my feelings. Well, we might have to. <laughs> i got a whole lot of <clears throat> notes in here. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. In Isaiah 28 and 15. Mm -hmm. Last week I couldn't get done quick enough. This morning I don't want to stop. <laughs> Isaiah, that's the difference between God moving in and driving out in the darkness. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. The longer you stay